Anushwa. Jai Hind, friends, and uh, welcome to our this uh, evening's uh, interactive session with with Brigadier Raghunath Jatar sir. And as we all know, that throughout this December month, Desh is celebrating the 50th anniversary of 1971 war. And as a veteran of 1971 war, Brigadier Jatar sir will enlighten us today about various aspects of the war and his experience and role in that decisive war fought by Indian forces. We are really honored to welcome you, sir, in our Vartalap. Thank you so much, uh, Anuja, uh, Anusaya, and Adrija. Thank you so much, both of you, for inviting me. And, uh, sir, at the very beginning of our interaction, uh, I would just like to request you to tell us about the background of uh, 1971 war at uh, which situation India had to go for a war against the neighbor? Okay, it's like this that uh, uh, at that time, there were two Pakistans, West Pakistan and East Pakistan. West Pakistan had four provinces and uh, East Bengal had only one, East Pakistan had only one, that is East Bengal. Though these uh, four provinces were there, the population was higher in East Bengal, considerably higher. And at that time, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto was the Prime Minister in Pakistan, and they decided to hold elections. This was in 1971. In the elections, since Bangladesh, at that time, East Bengal had higher population, and they had a very good leader called Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, which is Awami League Party, they won large number of seats and uh, logically speaking and democratically speaking they should have been forming the government however Zulfikar Wali Bhutto and the West Pakistanis somehow they tend to tended to look down on the on the East Pakistanis and they didn't want to give the power everybody loves power and very much so Mr. Bhutto so he did not want to give a power to Sheikh Mujibur Rahman so as a result, there was a great deal of agitation in East Pakistan against this. And the Pakistani army ruthlessly put down this rebellion by the East Pakistanis. A general called Dikka Khan was sent specially to put down the rebellion. And he was ruthless in all his uh, efforts. And a genocide was started. And lakhs of people were killed, murdered. They were... Uh, women were raped and so on. Now with this, there was an exodus of people from East Pakistan onto the neighboring states of Assam, West Bengal and Tripura in India. Now, as you understand, Indira Gandhi was our Prime Minister then and it was too much for her, for in India to tolerate so many refugees coming into our country. So we had to do something to stop this penetration or infiltration by the refugees. The chief ministers of, of West Bengal and Assam and they all pestered Mrs. Gandhi that she must do anything, but we got to stop this exodus. And that was about March or April of 1971. And uh, we had a famous general called General Manik Shah was the army chief. So Indira Gandhi gave him the task that you have to do something and stop this uh, people coming in. In fact, you have to push them back, use military means. And they wanted that you immediately do that in March, April, May. The, she was very keen on the pressure from the chief ministers that something must be done immediately to push the people back. So Manik Shah being a very professional soldier, he advised Indira Gandhi, no, that is not possible at this time because very soon Monsoons will start, and the terrain in uh, East Pakistan was such that the movement of troops will be and vehicles will be very difficult. So he advised that we have to wait. So at that, I uh, had to even threat a threaten resignation from the army. But anyway, he had his way, and it was decided to 
postpone the operations till December. This is the background to the war. Uh, you want to know anything more about the background or you think this is enough? Well, the, uh, then war started in the sense, uh, as you know, the strategy overall is such that uh, we had East Pakistan and West Pakistan. And uh, we, as I explained to you, we had to march into East Pakistan, we means the Indian Army. But at the same time, we had to make sure that the West Pakistani troops are contained in the Western area. They don't come and join the forces in East Pakistan. So that we contained. So it was planned by by the army and Field Marshal Manik Shaw. Then he was then general, not a field marshal. He became field marshal later on. But it was planned by him that we'll have containing operations, the holding operations in West Pakistan, West area, Punjab, Rajasthan Desert, etc. But we'll have the offensive in the East Pakistan area. This was the plan. So coming down to our sector, now I was, uh, if you ask me, what was I doing? I was then the a Lieutenant Colonel commanding an infantry battalion called 13 Battalion the Kumau Regiment. And we were part of 30 Infantry Brigade, which was located at Jodhpur. Here I would like to show you the map of this area. It will make some sense to you. Please show the map, Siddharth. Sir, are you sharing, sir? Uh, yeah, I want him to show the map. The, yeah, sir. Yeah. So here we are. I think I will have to just enlarge the results. Let me see. First, first, only show the map on the left, the uh, India Pakistan. Now, this is the, uh, I explained to you that we were part of, my battalion was part of 13 infantry brigade, which was part of the 12 infantry div. And 12 infantry div came under the southern command, which was headquarters at Pune. So, Jodhpur being the headquarters of the division, which is shown here, uh, Jodhpur, please show the arrow. That's right, that is Jodhpur. That's where the division headquarters was with under General Khambata and uh, brigade headquarters under brigade under 13 20 brigade under brigade ramados they are located and so was 13 kumar we are all located here and we had been given the task of having holding operations but it was a limited offensive task that we have been given so i'll explain to you what the task was before that i come to the overall map you are seeing the blue line on the left that is the border boundary between india and pakistan you see on the west side is pakistan West Pakistan, on the east side is India, and this is all the desert area. Uh, Thar Desert, you know, Thar Desert, you know. And uh, in, now coming towards Pakistan, you see the place like Sakkar, Sakkar on the left, then Rahim Yar Khan and Bahawalpur. This is the line, railway line, joining Sindh, which is the area of Sakkar, that is Sindh province, with Punjab through the state of Bahawalpur. This was the railway line. And Rahim Yar Khan was a place on that railway line, which is shown with a big airfield there. So they have shown that. That is Rahim Yar Khan. So as a part of our offensive, the 12 infantry Dev was given the task to go and conquer Rahim Yar Khan, capture Rahim Yar Khan. So it is a, going to be a difficult task, but we are planning for it. And it was planned that we, the 30 infantry brigade with 13 Kumar in the lead, was to come via Islamgad. If you see Islamgad on the right side near Tanor. There, there is on the that side. That is Islamgad. So from there to Islamgad on to Rahim Yar Khan. That was the plan for our brigade. Now this was planned for the 5 December 1971. However, Pakistan probably came to know that we had this intention. So they uh, preempted this attack by starting these operations. And they started the operations by bombing 
on 3rd December, uh, various airfields in India, including Jodhpur. So, uh, that's how the hostility really started in the western side. Now, I will show you again on the right side another map, which is in little more detail. It is not to scale, but it will show you the some of the areas of, of uh, some of the towns and villages of that area. This is uh, the line green and yellow. It is showing the international border between India and Pakistan. And there are border pillars marked on, all, all along the border. It is a marked border. And though it is a desert area, but they had all these marked, marked posts. And here, if you see now the arrow has been shown, that is the area of 638, border pillar 638. And 65, 66 are on the north, and 69 is on the lower side, on the south side. So this is the area of BP 68. And I'm just trying to show you so that the areas are familiar to you. This is the place of Longewala. If you remember the famous battle of Longewala, this is uh, Longewala. And <clears throat> already uh, I did, Islamgarh is shown in Pakistan on the right side. If you see on top, there's Islamgarh. On the left of that is Kishangarh. And then beyond that is Tanot on the left side. This is, I wanted to familiarize you with the map. Also, if you notice on the south east side of Longewala is a place called Ramgarh. It is shown there. And then further to the right is Jaisalmer, which is not shown just now, which is on the right side of the below. Okay. So, as I told you earlier, Pakistan uh, launched the offensive with an armored brigade and an infantry brigade and came from area of Masikwarotal on to a place called Kharotar. If you see Kharotar, small place down there, on the below that side, that's Kharotar. This is a map is approximate, it is not exact, it's not to scale. But somewhere there was Kharotar and the track from BP 68 to Kharotar and going on to Longewala, that was the route they followed with their armor and tanks. And they started their advance on 4 December morning. And by 4th evening, they had reached Longyawala. And they had surrounded the post. We had a post uh, held by a company of 23 Punjab under then Major Kuldeep Singh Chandpuri. And the battalion was 23 Punjab. This company only was located at Longyawala with uh, some minor defensive wire or something like that, hardly any proper defenses. But when Pakistanis came along the track, which I told you, by evening, they had reached uh, Longyawala. And they're actually in the middle of the night, they were quite tired with this day's march. And they were wondering what to do. They saw a little wire and they thought it's a minefield. So they had to be careful. So they said, we'll attack in the morning. So they waited for the morning. And that was their doom, shall I say. Because in the morning, uh, our air force became active. Till the whole night, uh, 23 Punjab held on against some fire. Some firing was there, and they also fired anti tank weapons and uh, shot a few tanks. But in the morning, the Indian Air Force, four hunter aircraft, they came flying and they saw it was all planned like that by us. And they came and played havoc with the Pakistani tanks. The Pakistanis had done a cardinal mistake that they started marching this operation from uh, Pakistan without air force support, without air support. It was very, shall I say, it was very, very foolish of them to come with, uh, without any air support. So our, our air force played havoc with them, destroyed a number of tanks, and as a result, they started withdrawing. They started withdrawing again from Longueva towards Karotar and on to BIP 68. Uh, if it is so far, I have talked. Is it any clear to you, or do you want to ask any questions? Please ask uh, both of you, Adija or Anasya. If you ask any questions, want any questions, I am just doing all the talking. I would appreciate if you ask some questions. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Uh... What was the overall strategy of Indian armed forces during the war, sir? Uh, which I uh, told you some time ago, strategy yes. was that we were to have uh, an offensive on the East Pakistan side 
on East Pakistan so that we could liberate that area and the refugees would be sent back. That was the basic aim. But if we did not uh, hold on to West Pakistan or attack there, the troops from Pakistan would be coming to uh, East Pakistan, which is because our, our job may be a little more difficult. So to con contain the troops there, we had been holding operations in West Pakistan and attacking in East Pakistan. That was the overall strategy. And sir, what was the uh, role of the of your battalion 13 Kumayun in uh, in, in the war, sir? Yeah. Now I'll come to that. Uh, so far, whatever I said about the division and brigade, I hope that is clear. Or you want me to ask? Yes, again? yes, yes. Clear, sir. Clear. That's clear. So if that is clear. As I told you, our task was given offensive task from Islamabad on to Rahim Yar Khan. However, when the Pakistani brigade attacked towards Ongiwala, all our plans were completely changed. And instead of an offensive role like that, we had to have a party defensive role. So our troops were diverted from that side onto the uh, area of Longiwala. Now, this map is showing a little bit about uh, what we had to do. So on the 8th of December, because I told you the attack on Longiwala was on 5 December, and uh, they were foiled and they started withdrawing. Then there were some minor skirmishes when they were drawing at Kharotar and so on. But then they started forming in at border pillar 68. It is shown a little more better here on this map. Please enlarge it. Tells me. Yeah, that is where you see border pillar 68. And the, uh, I'll come to that little. Just have a look at this uh, place, border pillar 68. And uh, I'll now come back to Longyawala. From where, from the, the north of uh, rather northeast of Longiwala, we started, we are battalion had formed on 8th December, and we were given the task of, of uh, capturing this border pillar 68, that area. So, we had on the, we had not, we were not going around the Karota track, we were going around the track from the north, north side, northeast side. And we had to, we had been given the job on the 8th December, and we, in fact, the brigade commander was planning it with the three battalion commanders, including myself, what to do. So I uh, I volunteered and I asked the brigadier, requested him, please give the job to me because I was very keen to do something for the brigade. So I said, give the job to me. So I was put in the lead. I mean, the battalion 13 Kumar was in the lead. And when we advanced, we had to walk about 11 kilometers on foot. And as our leading company, A company, got held up, uh, now you see the map here, on the right side, this is our company. Uh, just a little further map. Bring the map down further. Still further. Still further. Yeah. So now, if you see on the right, there is shown as A company was held up on the right side. That is our A company was held up with the fire from the border plus 68 area. So I came forward and I saw as to what the situation is like. And I made a plan, and there are two high grounds we are showing. They are shown here, that in the circles. Uh, that's it. Uh, that uh, in the red, just below. So bring it down, please. Uh, this you see one flat ground. On the left side, there'll be other areas. Just see on the left side of the map, please. That's it. This is the minefield of Pakistanis, and there you are seeing the red circle area. These are the uh, held uh, positions held by the Pakistanis. There are two battalions with two companies of theirs, a company of a company of uh, 10 Punjab and a company of 1st Punjab. They were holding this position when we were held up here, or our A company, and we were, you know, I had made a plan to attack. So I had made a plan, fortunately for me, we made a plan to attack going full left, as this arrow is shown there. Arrow is shown that that is the way we plan to attack on going right, and then from there attack from the west side. Doing that, unknowingly at that time, we avoided the minefield. You see the green minefield circles, there is a minefield was there. And even more to that, right. But we avoided that and we came right up and we attacked first company attack on the left, which you are saying, left, uh, no, the larger circle, larger circle of red, which is the company, that's right. This is the company held by, uh, the position held by Pakistani company. 
and that was attacked by our D company, well, company commanded by Major Shikhar then, became a lieutenant colonel later on. His company attacked very fast, and the attack started at about uh, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, but finished by 2 o'clock, they had captured that position. Then came the second phase, which we decided to launch as soon as possible, but the, it was only practically put in by about uh, 5 o'clock in the evening. And thus, we are seeing the second circle now right on top. That is where the main position of the enemy was, and he had tried to hold on to that. But we had our tanks with us, a lot of artillery support was there, tanks were there, six tanks of uh, T-55 tanks, for one independent armor squadron. And together, we attacked and this our, uh, my B company, held by Major Chindi Singh, he was the company commander, uh, we, along with armor and artillery. They attacked this position, and by evening, by dusk, that second position also was fought. So the whole captured. So the entire position now was in our hands. So it was it was a grand success. The enemy was surprised with the speed of the attack. He didn't think that we will attack in broad daylight with tanks. Uh, but since this is a, a teaching in the army, that if the enemy is holding a weak position, and you have got armor in assault role, you can attack in the daytime. So that's what we did. Then it was a great success. Uh, but Alan got a uh, theater honor for uh, sin. We got some awards of two Senna medals and four mentioned in dispatches, including one for myself. These are the awards we got. And it was a very satisfactory result as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, what else would you like? Uh, yes. Yeah, sir. One thing just uh, wanted to wanted to know that uh, what was uh, uh, obviously there was some sp special strategy to, uh, for the desert uh, warfare. Can you share some uh, experience in uh, fighting in desert, particularly? Uh, desert uh, is different from other areas, particularly because movement is very difficult for vehicles, and they require some special efforts to for movement. And we had to, uh, we had devised the system whereby for the, below the wheels, you could put this and some tracks were there, some improvisation was there so that they could move fast. At certain places, they should not get brought down. That is, movement was very difficult. Second thing about the uh, desert is uh, a difficulty of water, as you know, it's very difficult to get water. And that is, in fact, the crux of the problem, the administration, because of these difficulties, administration is difficult. And uh, as you know, army marches on his stomach. So unless you are well supported with food and water and so on, uh, uh, movement is difficult. That is a big problem in tanks. On the other hand, as far as tactics are concerned, there is considerable scope for movement, particularly of tanks. Uh, wide areas, they are open there. And so for it's a tactical paradise in a way, but uh, it's a headache for the administrator. Sir, you have an experience to fight the 65 war also. Uh, well, uh, I had a lot of, uh, as luck would have it, wherever there was war, I was there with my battalion. Starting off at 62, uh, 61 rather, the go operation, which is not really a war, but I was in charge mm -hmm. of prisoners, the Portuguese prisoners. And then in 62 war, I was very closely involved in the Ladakh, in the India-China war. I was a company commander in 13 Kumar at a place called Magar Hill in Chushul. It's a famous battle where our, one of our companies called C Company, then under Major Shaitan Singh, they put up a very, very stiff fight. And uh, uh, the Chinese didn't expect such a stiff fight from our side. But we lost a lot of troops. We lost 114 Jawans who were martyred there on that day, along with Major Shaitan Singh. And, uh, the Chinese lost considerably a higher number of casualties. So that was the famous battle of Razangla. And so I was a company commander in a B company. So attack was expected on my post, but as luck would have it, the Chinese attacked the Razangla post, which was held by Satan Singh. So uh, that's why you are seeing me today. Otherwise, you wouldn't be seeing me here today. So that was my experience in 62. In 65, I was not with the battalion. I was a staff officer in uh, a brigade in the, in the uh, 
अमृतसर एरिया एंड आप ब्रिगेड कल्चर फेयर अमाउंट ऑफ टेरिटरी ऑफ पाकिस्तान एंड वी अल्टीमेटली बेस्ड ऑन द इशुगिल कनाल यू आर लोकेटेड ओवर देयर दैट इज माय एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ 65 वॉर देन आई हैड एक्सपीरियंस इन द मिजोरम व्हिच इज नॉट वॉर व्हिच इज द इंटरनल काउंटर इंसर्जेंसी ऑपरेशंस देयर आल्सो आई वाज देयर एंड देन अल्टीमेटली 71 सो आई एम अ वॉर वेटरन इन इन अ गुड वे इन इन मेनी ऑपरेशंस uh sir uh, actually the experience of 62 65 they obviously need uh, separate uh, chapters to discuss because all wars have their own importance in the history of the nation uh, and history of the battalion who actually engaged in that war also but uh, what how you will be differentiate bet uh, between the experiences of these wars I mean, especially in '65 and '71. It's like this that uh, sometimes there are, for example, the '62 war. It was a defensive battle for us. We were defending against the Chinese, who were much stronger in a stronger uh, force there. So we were defending. Whereas here, now if we saw '71 war, we are on the offensive. So there is a basic difference in the two. and uh, also the terrain is different uh, as i told you some time ago the desert the its administrators uh, headache uh, so is elsewhere also but particularly in the desert and the tacticians paradise in a way so it uh, this operations differ in different jungles now mizoram the thick jungles so entirely different type of operation and that is not war of course Uh, and uh, for example artillery will really will not be so effective in jungles because the trees are there so it won't be so effective so it is like that so but all the same what i would say since you i think you want to ask that you, what is the similarity there are certain similarities which happen i'll tell you a personal experience now that you ask this question it will be you will not believe it but very often in war people fire at each other by mistake i have known uh, in 65 war uh, two battalions not knowing that the other side is our own troops they fired at each other luckily they are not so many casualties but we myself a brigade commander and myself as staff officer we held up in between two battalions firing at each other by error the same thing in mizoram i had the same experience we had to be very careful in firing first we had to make sure that it is uh, not our own troops but their hostiles Now in seventy-one war, I had similar experience. I was first because of this past once bitten twice shy, so I had to be very careful. So when we held up my A company, I went up to check up first to make sure that the on the other side is Pakistan and not our own troops. So the armor armor corps, the, the tank driver didn't quite appreciate what I was doing. He said, "What is the doubt? Is this, you can see the enemy." I, I had to make personally sure. So I went to the ridge, saw myself Pakistan is. On the other side, they're firing the mortars. I knew, seeing the dress, it's that they're Pakistani. So, one of the lessons was we we have to be very careful when you are firing that this is enemy and not your own people. That's I give you a small example of similarities in operations. Uh, sir, would you like to share some uh, personal experience, uh, uh, rather interesting memories? from the war uh, particular 71 war if you are asking me uh, it will be quite revelation for you that after the uh, battle was over the cease fire and we area mas grandson showed you this masjid war of tal on the map the our people were holding on that area and i had a platoon uh, located there And as you know, after when the ceasefire is on, we are not supposed that area. We are not supposed to. Nobody is supposed to move troops from there. That is the ceasefire line. So you must honorably, uh, you must honor that line, and you cannot move troops forward. But the Pakistanis try to play dirty, and the platoon of mine was being detached from the rest of the battalion because they came in between and occupied a certain feature which are not supposed to be there. They occupied. now i was faced with a dilemma at night my platoon i got a message that they were detached from us now we had orders to cease fire 
that you will not open artillery fire. And strict orders that artillery fire will not be opened unless there is a permission given. I, I was too concerned my, with the safety of my troops. I said, uh, I will have to ignore the orders for the timing. I will explain to my seniors later on. But for the timing, I cannot, uh, I don't have time to ask my seniors. So I opened artillery fire. And the best part of it is this was in the middle of the night. Early morning when we went up, we saw white flags from Pakistanis trying to show, please come for a talk, you know, trying to surrender. But they understand, the army, Pakistan army understands tough language. They don't understand soft language. They have to, we have to be tough with them. And war in any case, we have to be, but particularly here I found a tough language really helps with them. This is an example I give you. Sir, so 71 war is one of the most planned and decisive war actually fought by our forces or our nation. Yes. So because because uh, most of the cases, uh, we were surprised by the attack from the neighbors and we uh, we are always have to protect ourselves and to uh, regain the captured uh, lands from, uh, from the so-called intruders, actually the regular Pakistan army. So what will be your message as a veteran to our next generation or the, I mean, to the young viewers about the 71 war? Well, 71 war is a extremely good example of good planning and very rapid movement. In fact, there's no time to explain to you, but so many parts of the operation were so brilliantly done that it was not thought of. Uh, you might have heard about one Lieutenant General Sagat Singh, who was our core commander there. He was a very strong field commander. As I said, we were in the west. We didn't know this, but in the eastern side, very fast operations were conducted and on the spot decisions taken. As a result of that, Pakistanis were surprised. Even our own army was surprised that we could move that fast. Within a matter of a fortnight, the whole area was captured. It was a brilliant move. And uh, uh, 93,000 prisoners captured. It is one of the largest number of prisoners in any war, I think. They captured prisoners, surrendered. And that was a, overall a brilliant offensive operation. Because the cause was just, say, if the cause is just, the army fights even better. And we had the support of uh, uh, East Pakistani, the uh, Mukti Vahini. Uh, they, they rose very well, they fought very well. And they were in, we were in close cohort with them. So it was a well planned and uh, joint operations planning. Good example. And as I told you, on the west side, I only told you about the desert, but in the Punjab also, in India and Punjab, there were operations which I don't have time to explain. So, but there were operations there. There were some famous battles were fought there in the, in the north. So, uh, even in JNK, some operations did take place, but there is no time to talk about them. Audrija, are you there? Yes. Actually, I, I think Audrija is to... having some uh, network issue. Can you hear? Can anyone hear me? Yes, yes, we are hearing very well, Audrija. Okay. Actually, I wanted to show um, everyone one photo of Sir. Um, that, sir, is there uh, any other thing you want to share with us? Uh, well, uh, what would you want to know? Uh, you tell me <laughs> in view of this. Uh, I, so I after, tell you that after the operations, uh, there's a one of your photographs I'd like to show you. Now you see, uh, already showing a photograph. Firstly, in the in this screen now, you're seeing the number of weapons that we, we found. You know, the Pakistanis lost 51 dead bodies in our area. They, they, they lost the battle, 51 people died, and the weapons that are listed here, all these weapons, they... They left and they ran from there. And uh, uh, on the right side, you are seeing the it's an interesting photograph. So large number, of, as I explained to you, large number of weapons were found. There we got two two brand new vehicles also found, which hmm. we used for a while. Now this is a photograph of the then defense minister Raksha Mantri called Jagjivan Ram. We see in the uh, white cap. Uh, on yes, the, yes, 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 sir. Yes, oh, not sir. There, not him. Not him. this is the chief minister of Rajasthan. Barkatullah Khan, but on the, this is Mr. Jagjivan Ram. He was okay. the defense minister. So they have captured Pakistani tanks and he came for a visit. So he's there 
and uh, I mentioned the name Brigadier Ramadas. If you see you can Khaki in the middle, there's a person uh, just west of uh, left of uh, Barakatullah Khan, Mr. Barakatullah Khan. That person is Brigadier Ramadas, and uh, just above him on the right, on the right. This is uh, uh, the Sikh officer, and that is Brigadier Ramadas, my brigade commander. And I myself am on the left of this uh, Sikh gentleman. You see, that is myself as a left turn. So this is a photograph we, we treasure because. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, Defense Minister will be there. Then on the right, there's another map, as another photograph of the border pillar, actual border pillar 638. And after we had caught death, we marked there 638, Pakistan, India. Captured by Tajin Kumar on 9 December 71. That is indicating that. So, another the thing of interest is when the Pakistanis ran from our area, the commanding officer's name was my counterpart there, called Muhammad Sadiq Malik of the Punjab Regiment. Now, he ran leaving his briefcase behind. So, oh we got hold of the briefcase, and in the briefcase, we found his letterhead. So I treasured that letter, right? It is here. <laughs> Left Colonel Muhammad Salik Malik, Punjab. So this was his letter. It will be of interest to people. That this is what happened. Sir, when uh, you all uh, got the news of uh, surrendering of uh, General Niazi, then uh, how did you celebrate that day? Uh, was there any celebration? And what was the feeling, sir? No, of course, the feeling of elation was there and surprise, but uh, there's no time to celebrate because we are still deployed no, on the forward area. Okay. Really, we cannot uh, celebrate. But when we come down, when we came back to Jodhpur, there was a big celebration and uh, Brigade Commander was very kind and they really felicitated us very well. Our troops had done well. Sir, at that time, the, uh, I mean, uh, even during the Kargil War, the postal department was very active, but uh, 71 war, the communication was not so good. Uh, how did you communicate with your family at that, that time when you were in the front? Well, uh, there was a telephone line, which difficulty okay. we, we got to know, but uh, I did manage to speak. My wife had a telephone at home, so I was able to speak, but with difficulty because very rarely that you get. Uh, in fact, I might tell you that. I was, uh, no, this I'm, uh, I'm mixing up. Uh, I had to indicate that is uh, to the exchange that the senior officer is speaking. So I said uh, the brigade is speaking. So the phone call came to my wife and said, Brigade is speaking. She got very worried. Why is the brigade ringing me up? There was uh -huh. something wrong. So she was very, I could see the telephone being dropped on. But we had communication of telephone line. But very rarely, we, in fact, they, as I told you, that 3rd December, they started uh, bombing. And the bombs fell very near to our house in, uh, in Jodhpur, in an area called oh Ratanara. Ratanara. The bombs, and they, then I told my wife, and that time I phoned up and said, you have tasted the battle before, uh, before I have done. And they have already seen. <coughs> Sir, and one more thing I just uh, would like to ask you uh, that, uh, I mean, uh, was there anyone from your family in army before you or you were the first one? No, uh, we have a tradition of uh, military tradition prevalent in the, in the family because as way back in First World War, my uncle, my father's elder brother was uh, in the medical corps, in the IMS, okay. in the Indian Medical Service. And he was a very, very eminent soldier and a doctor. And he had been twice decorated with a very high award called DSO, Distinguished Service Order. Uh, in the uh, First World War and then later on in the frontier area, fighting the Afghans and the uh, Afridi tribesmen, he had lost a leg. So there also he was mm. decorated the same. He lost a leg and then he could not join the army, continue, continue in the army. So he went to the prisons department in Nagpur area. That was him. Then later on, several other people seeing his example, uh, a large number of people had joined the army and air force, and also done uh, very well by their country. We all served very well. So that was a motivation and like a family Absolutely. tradition I had to maintain. 
that's how my father said go ahead so it's a real honor for us to have you and yes, uh, uh, we are really for... thankful to you for uh, i mean telling us in such detail and uh, with the with the help of the maps and this uh, powerpoint presentation and i would just like to thank mr uh, siddharth jatar also the grandson of uh, jatar sir uh, he is the technical person today who helped uh, sir and us uh, to see the technical detail of the war and uh, thank you so much sir and we will uh, come to you later also and we will listen your experience on the 62 and 65 war also in detail sir, sir you have today, been an uh, we just come, came to know that you were part of that uh, uh, both, both of the wars so sir you have been an inspiration again for we will come back to you and uh, we will listen to you in the future sir thank you so much anushya and adhija it's been a pleasure for me to interact with you and i'll yes, sir, and forward to more interactions Yes, sure, sir. And sir, you have thank been you an inspiration. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Siddharth, and uh, Jai Hind, sir. Jai Hind, Jai Hind. Thank you. Jai Hind, sir. All the best. Bye. Thank you, sir.